Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. You hit the spot. The place for the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Put your thinking caps on, because the conversation starts now. Yeah. We're going to cover chronic pain today, Brains, here on the edge with the yellow postcard. And our guest, Samantha Rawlingson. She moved from Corpus Christi, I always want to say crispy, Corpus Christi, Texas, to Austin. We was just talking about that. But what she's also going to do is she's going to help us move some pain. Now, how many of us experience chronic pain? I guarantee you, if you live long enough, there's going to be something that is going to bother you. And usually it's the back, the sciatic nerve, the hips, the shoulders, the knees, you know, the ones that we put the most work on. So she's going to teach us some techniques uh, on and give us our philosophy on how to reduce that pain. Uh, we're also going to talk about diet because the things that we eat also contribute to that. And it's mind over matter. If you don't mind, it don't matter. So all of that and then some. Welcome to the show, Samantha. You are the best. Tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Well, thank you for having me, April. Um, I'm very excited to speak with you, you guys and your with you and your guests. Um, so my journey started, believe it or not, when I was nine years old, I wanted to be a nurse. Oh. Who would have known that being a nurse would put me in chronic pain? Mm, I can imagine. You know, yeah. because there are people there, there's a lot of lifting and turning and yeah. Yep. And so about 20 years ago, I had an injury at work and um, I didn't realize how bad it was at the time. I didn't even report it. I mean, that's how minor it was. And um, from there, it just, I had a car accident while I was being treated for the back injury and the car accident put me back into normal. It, it like took mm. the pain away. And so a couple of years later, I, um, it developed the same pain because it was a certain place. It wasn't like my lower back. It was like in my shoulder. And um, from the, for the 20 plus years, I've been dealing with this since then. So I went to a chiropractor and then I went from one thing to another. I tried Eastern medicine, Western medicine, you name it. I tried it. I was exhausted. I was to, and your, your, People who are listening, who have, are in chronic pain, they can relate to this. I didn't want to get off the couch. I didn't, all I did was watch TV. And then in 2020, I watched this movie on Netflix called The Game Changers, and it literally changed my life. Mm. Yeah, that Netflix will do it to you one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm smart off Netflix, so don't hate on them, Brains. Oh, yeah. You are so right. And so that day I decided I wasn't going to eat meat anymore. Yeah. So um, I was sick of the pain controlling me and I decided I was going to take control of it. And so 2020 was a year of a ton of positive changes for me. Mm -hmm. I went pretty much because we weren't eating out. I went vegan because... I wasn't eating out. So at home. You skipped over pescatarian, vegetarian, and went straight to the vegan? Well, I went from vegetarian and then, ate, you know, that was beginning in January. And then come April, we were at home and my daughter was already vegan. And I'm like, we're not going out to eat. So I might as well eat what's at home. And I literally lost 14 pounds in two months by just eating vegan. Wow. Yeah, that vegan, you know, I tried it and <laughs> my food tastes like straw. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, I know it was awful and I tried, but now I go to some very upscale vegan mm -hmm. restaurants and I tell you, it is absolutely delicious. But, you know, the, the things that bind, things they don't use, you know, the eggs and the mm -hmm. cheese and all, that's what I live for. And so that's probably one of the issues that is contributing to the pain. It People is that but it is and especially meat now again i eat meat and all you meat lovers i'm not trying to convert you i'm just trying to bring it to your <laughs> attention is that the meat has already been dead two weeks before it gets to the store really 
And then it sits on in the counter in case they're two, three days after the butcher done fondled all over it. Yep. Then you get home and you say, oh, I'm not going to cook that hamburger right now. Let me stick it in the freezer. By the time you cook it, it's three weeks to a month old. Imagine that. Yeah. And then the digestion of all of that. Mm-hmm. And if you look at it, Samantha, the strongest animals in the animal kingdom are vegetarians. Yeah. Elephants. Giraffes, um, owls, owls. Yeah, I don't even think monkeys. I know gorillas. That's what started me. I saw the silverback gorilla. Oh, so beautiful! His fur and his eyes were so bright and everything. And all they ate was vegetarian, yeah. you know, vegetables and and fruits and stuff. Okay, so you get to this point, and yeah. then what happens? And then, um, because I'm already doing the self-discovery, I felt I come across something called emotional freedom technique. It's Mm -hmm. also called tapping. And I started transforming my mindset amongst everything else. And so the last three years, I've just been on this journey and yes, I do still have pain. It's not totally gone, but most days I keep it at a manageable level. And I really do believe it's from changing everything I did, my mindset, my diet, just even my lifestyle. I wasn't moving. I'm moving. I do things every day, whether I hurt or not, because when I don't, it makes it worse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I found that too. I've picked up gardening again. And for the last, well, there's only so much gardening you can do, but for the last (laughs) week and a half, let me tell you, picking up those big, I got all new pots, big porcelain pots and uh, five and 10 pound bags of dirt and moving them and even the water can can be uh heavy oh yeah you and know? let me tell you gardening is also great for your mind because it's a way of meditating if you're not listening to music or anything and you're just concentrating on the gardening that's a type of meditation when you think about it well and i'm talking to the plants when exactly. i when i get up in the morning i go out there and i say good morning guys and i tell you their leaves just start Everything is energy. Every single thing is energy. Every yes. single thing needs oxygen and water. I agree. You know, and so that's very important. And you were doing a lot of physical work though, because mm-hmm. there's patients and all of them aren't, you know, 120 pounds. You got some people four or 500 pounds. You know, you need, uh, I know I've seen people in the hospital where they need two or three people. They've had a procedure on how they lift and how they have to get their legs up to change them. If they have to do that, have to have to assess them to the uh, the bathroom or walking, you know, all of that is a lot of uh, very physically demanding. So now you get to this point and you're in chronic pain. You are, um, you've tried everything. You know, and brains, again, if you're under a doctor's care, continue to do that. We're not trying to tell you to do anything else, but these are some alternatives. But I know those injections, what happens sometimes with some people is that it numbs the pain to the point where you think you're absolutely fine. And then you overcompensate. Right. And then when it wears off, then you're jacked up like a soup sandwich. I love that. That's pretty messed up. But, you know, or if you have hip problems or knee problems, you overcompensate on the other side. Now, physical therapy is very important. But mm-hmm. I, you know what? I do my own exercises. Yoga is amazing. Mm-hmm. It works with the mind. What are some of the things that you do on a regular basis, day by day, that really helps you with this? Um, like you said, yoga is um, one of the stretching is a very important one for me. Um, and so, like you said, the medical interventions, the physical therapy, those are important. The other thing that people um, don't even think about with chronic pain is things like the cognitive behavioral strategies, CBT, NLP, um, just therapy, because therapy can um, some for some people, not everybody they have things from their past and that's why they have the pain. So many people tell me that. So many of my guests swear to that. They say that this is epigenetic or this is from previous trauma. Yep. You know what? When you're in pain, you're not thinking about, no. how, you know, how you almost got hit by a car at five. 
or how you almost drowned. You're not thinking about that. You're thinking about what's going on right now. How do you pull back the layers to find the root cause? How do you do that? That's exactly how is the therapy and the, um, for me, I I really believe in journaling. And when you're journaling, journal on, when you write, put that pen to paper, journal on all the negative first, get everything off your chest, just whatever you can think of, because when you hold on to that and you hold on to stress, it makes your pain worse. So journal and then follow it up with gratitude. What are you grateful for? Even if you're dying that day, I'm grateful for the trees out there. I am grateful for the weather. I am, I am grateful that I can write. Well, let me tell you about my gratitude situation. The other day, I was out here, wasn't gardening. I was walking up this monster hill. I was at the bottom of the hill, and I looked up and I said, "Shoot, I don't want to walk up this hill. I'm gonna turn around." And then spirit sat right there on my shoulder and said, "Do you know how many people can't get out the bed?" Yeah. Do you know how many people are not able to walk? Do you know how many people wish they had a beautiful neighborhood and community that was safe that you could walk in? I was like, here we go. And when I got to the top of the hill, I patted myself on the back. I was so proud of myself. Good for you. You know, so it is about gratitude and it's not thinking of it as a punishment. It's actually a gift because there's so many people that can't do that. I want to go back to diet for a minute. Okay. Um, you know, we talked about dairy and we haven't talked about dairy and sugar. How does that constrict the muscle and the blood flow that can uh, uh, that can attribute to chronic pain? Oh, man, let me tell you, sugar is, and you probably heard this, it, brains out there. You guys have probably heard that sugar is like cocaine. Mm. It is. It's very addictive and it's hard. And I am number one sugar addict. Okay. Um, But changing my diet made a difference. Limiting that sugar really helps bring the inflammation down. And because all sugar does is it causes inflammation in your body and um, it just makes it worse and worse. So sugar is bad for so many reasons and it's so good to taste. <laughs> well, you know, it was strange when I was in China, I ordered water and everyone else ordered soft drinks. And the waitress said, ah, you're one of the few Americans that don't enjoy that sweet poison. Oh, yeah. And now when I look at a particular beverage, I'm like, that's sweet poison. Just because it's sweet doesn't mean that it's not dangerous. Exactly. And you can get, if you really have that sweet tooth, you can do things like fruit. Fruit has natural sugars. It's not dangerous like the added sugar. The added sugar actually causes the inflammation in your body, and your, which in turn causes the pain. Mm-hmm. So if you can decrease that, and the number one question I have is how do you do that? Well, you take one step at a time. Right. Um, because it is hard in some people need help with it. It's not something you can do overnight. We did it. We went, uh, we probably shouldn't have did it on our way to Las Vegas, but we, yeah. we did it. <laughs> <laughs> but people don't realize not only are you eating the sugar, but you're drinking the sugar in your calories. Oh, they'll, you know, you pay $5 and they'll give you three or four refills. But then when you look at it, it's, you know, that much syrup and then the rest is salsa water. So now you've got the gas and the bloating and the inflammation mm-hmm. from that. And so it's one thing after another. Uh, The sugar also, the detox, as you said, is a journey. Because again, we did it when we went to to Vegas and we had the headache from hell. And I was like, what is going on? You know, what's going on? It will really take you through something. And then you feel guilty when you go back to it. But it is very addicting. It's very addicting. Dairy, I'm, you know, I'm not a dairy person. I used to... Yeah, I am in a way, you know, I like my cottage cheese and I like my yogurt and and that kind of stuff. But as far as milk, now, Samantha, you're a woman of a particular age, somewhere close to to, to my age within Mm -hmm. years. Don't you remember when milk lasts for four or five days? Girl, it's lasting two weeks now. Yeah. Oh, isn't that the truth? Now, if you change to milk alternatives, those last a good month. 
I've right. never tried that. So what do you do? Do you, well, you're a vegan. Do you do almond milk? I do almond milk. I do almond coconut, sometimes oat milk, depending on what I'm having. My daughter loves oat milk and coffee because it's like, it's thick like cream. Really? Yes. So they make, how do they make cream out of, oh. She, okay. During COVID, this is funny. During COVID, my daughter decided, she was vegan at this time, decided she was going to make her own oat milk. Hmm. Buy it. <laughs> it was um it was a journey um and it did not turn out like the stores <laughs> <laughs> so um you can i mean some people out there like doing that kind of stuff and you can you can make your own almond milk and um but th those are alternatives in ice cream um yes there's still sugar in it but if you still need that thing you can use the alternatives they have um alternatives milks and ice cream um cheese is my big issue and um i love cheese too uh i know and i've given it up for the most part every once in a while i'm like oh i really want something but um dairy causes a lot of inflammation especially if you have chronic mm -hmm. pain you have a chronic illness um such as fibromyalgia that that dairy can actually really cause a lot of inflammation mm -hmm. in the body and it doesn't we weren't meant to drink cow's milk not really it was supposed to be a temporary thing and even then breast is best i mean yeah yeah, yeah it's a labor and delivery nurse so yes <laughs> yeah. it, it's 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 rough and um it's so expensive it, oh, it's gotten so and expensive. Everything is so expensive. So if you try to eat healthier, you know, and I really have a lot of empathy for people that don't have fresh fruits and vegetables or local grocery stores. There's a lot of places that don't have that, even in rural areas or whatever the situation yep. may be. Grow a garden. I'm out there gardening right now. I've got all the herbs. I'm fighting with the uh, with the birds and the squirrels for my lettuce and my strawberries and my tomatoes. Oh my gosh, they just think it's oh <laughs> it's yeah, it's heaven stuff. for them. It's heaven for them. But I'm saying to myself, you know, these things don't have the pesticides, right? Wash your fruits and vegetables off. Some people say baking soda. I don't like baking soda. I put a little vinegar and water. Mm -hmm. uh, whites to still, and I wash off my meat. I wash off my vegetables before I consume them because, again, they have been in the field. They've been handled by a bunch of people two or three weeks before you get them. But you know what I I have a problem with is everything with these labels: fat free, sugar free, gluten free, mm -hmm. organic. How do you really know? Yeah, and this is the thing, really. If you're eating a true just eat eat how we're supposed to eat. eat you don't have to be vegan you don't I'm, I mean it's veganism is very hard I'm more vegetarian and even that is hard for some people but let me tell you something if you eat your fruits you eat your vegetables you keep your red meat to a minimum because that's also an inflammation marker and can um, cause chronic pain um, keep it you know eat fish chicken, those type of things. And you're doing the right things for your body then. And um, speaking of there are um, desert uh, food deserts is what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And if we could, as communities, form these community gardens, which is a dream of mine, is to go through the U.S. and form the community gardens it's just so much better for us. And we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have all these issues we're having. Well, and then children would eat a lot better because they would be excited to see where their actual food right. comes from. And yeah. then they know that they've worked the soil. Uh, it, my little neighbor comes down here and he goes, oh, you know, Miss April, can I have a few tomatoes and can we have some fresh basil and all? I was like, yeah, well, come on, let's go on and, and make a pizza. And, you know, because they enjoy that. Right. Exactly. And food, like you said, food is a meditation. It is. It's a mindset. Now, you said that you were a labor and delivery nurse? Yeah. Okay. Long time ago. Okay. <laughs> but even with that, you know, um, we want to talk to those individuals because you want to, and again, take your doctor's advice, 
but supplements, make sure you're getting enough protein, especially if you're nursing the baby. Mm -hmm. You want to stay away from the bad stuff, the alcohol, the cigarettes, the marijuana, you know, they think marijuana is the cure all end all to everything. But uh, believe me, it's genetically modified now too. It's not a good thing. That's true. You know, so what you really want to do is you want to take all that in consideration because this might not be the, you know, while you're pregnant might not be the best time to convert if you were doing it before and your body was used to it or afterwards, but you got a little person inside of there that's really depending on all these vitamins and all these nutrients. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I agree. And so it's really important during that time period to eat those fruits and vegetables and yeah, converting your whole diet all at once is hard anyway. So, but you really being pregnant, that would be really hard. (laughs) And watch your elimination cycle brains. You know, even if you're not, you know, I know some people um, that uh, eating red meat has really altered their menstrual cycle as women. Oh, yeah. It's really affected them that way. Um, You know, understanding if you're eliminating properly, if your urine is over, you know, really strong or when you eliminate and have a bowel movement, if it's stinking up the whole house, that's a key indicator brains that you're rotten inside. Exactly. Also, I wanted to. I wanted to tell your audience a a good way, because like you said, some places you can't get fresh fruit and vegetables or it's expensive. And people are like, well, how do I get this? Let me tell you guys in, in Walmart is all over the United States. There's also places like Winco is here in Texas. I don't know what's in other States, but there's cheaper versions similar to Walmart frozen vegetables and frozen fruit are so cheap, especially vegetables. You can get them for like a dollar a bag. Not kidding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and that's wonderful. Let's step into the emotional freedom technique. Cause I'm a tapper. I totally believe in it. I do. I do. The first time I tell this story all the time, first time my husband saw me doing, he goes, baby, are you itching? What's wrong? (laughs) I still can't get my husband to do it. (laughs) But you know what, and and again, it is different. But what I've learned, the more that I talk to people like you that have really gotten into it, I went, as I was tapping, I was just kind of silencing the mind. I did right. not realize you can ask questions, that you can, you know, that you can have a place of gratitude during this time. You are, you know, looking for answers. You're re- you're releasing a lot of stress. You are hitting pressure points. Emotional freedom technique is wonderful for adults, but I think it's super fantastic to teach to children. When you agree, mm-hmm. I totally agree. I was a school nurse a few years ago, and um, as a school nurse, you are very very limited what you can do, and you don't have meds unless the mom or dad has brought meds. And so I had a student; he was in so much pain, he had hurt his back, and his parents worked, and he's he's like I. I need to call my, my parents. I said, you want to try something? And, um, so I said, I use this anyways. And I sat down with him and we did a tapping session about pain and he went back to class. And later on that afternoon, I like after lunchtime, he's like, can we do that again? And he made it through the day. So it, yeah, it's pretty amazing. And if you can teach the kids especially right now with all the anxiety and depression and everything else in our schools, EFT tapping is amazing for the, especially anxiety. It it can really transform your day. If we had a student that was just high strung and we, we would just tell them, we wouldn't go through the technique. We would tell them to just tap right here on the chest and, and say, ask him, Hey, what's going on? And we would get him through it and calm him down. And just by that, tapping it would calm him down right because it you know old school was you know there was corporal punishment you could paddle somebody's butt if they were out of line but now it's you know it's the shaming it's the isolating them away from the other kids it's the detention it's the writing standards well there's a 25 kids in one class and one teacher and no teacher's aid she's trying to get order there and you do have some children that do have some health challenges Yep. You know, mental health challenges. So what they're doing now is a lot of more mindfulness, yoga, emotional freedom technique. Uh, some schools are very progressive and even allowing Reiki. Oh, really? Yeah. 
yeah, they're they're doing, but they got to be progressive because some oh, yeah. people are like, you know, I'm not having, you know, all this, they think it's witchery or whatever. And they got a right to believe that. But energy movement brains is the best thing that you can do. So, mm -hmm. so let's ask some fun questions about you. How about that? Okay. All right. So now that I know you don't eat chocolate. <laughs> oh, I do eat chocolate. I eat dark chocolate. Ooh. What are some of your guilty pleasures? Oh, that would be one of them. And then um, wine. Okay. I love wine. Um, oh, guilty pleasures. Those are probably, well, ice cream. That I And I limit myself with the ice cream. I'm like, I don't even keep it in the house because I'll eat it. So every once in a while, I'll be like, ah, let's go ahead and splurge. <laughs> I know. I'm going to go see my father in a few minutes. And his... His thing is strawberry ice cream. And I bet you he hasn't had strawberry ice cream in a thousand years. So I'm, it made him a little care package. I'm going to put him some in there. I'm going to be the best daughter on the planet. If you were an appliance in the kitchen, what appliance would you be, Samantha? I would be the, um, oh, I can't think of what it's called right now. The cooker, the, not the oven, but the, the, uh, uh not the rice cooker, the, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue too. Uh, you replace it like fryer. an air fryer. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. We got that right, right? <laughs> Why would you want to be an air fryer? Because you can do everything in it. Even if you don't have a stove or an oven, my husband was a tra was tra travel nursing and we were in a hotel a few times that had no oven. I learned how to make cookies in that thing. I learned how to, girl, I can make almost anything in it. Really? Yep. Well, I have to talk to you because I have one and haven't even taken it out the box yet. Yeah. And actually yesterday, the apartment got super hot in here. And I looked at my husband and I said, we're pulling the air fryer out. We're not using the oven anymore this summer. So as you mentioned, your husband is a traveling nurse. What is one of the best places that you visited that you could plant roots in? outside of Austin. <laughs> we absolutely love New York, New Jersey. Oh, okay. What yeah. is it about New York and New Jersey? Um, it's actually called New York, N-E-W-A-R-K. New, yeah, so um, it was just, the people were so friendly up there and I know you don't hear that about New Jersey, but they were. Um, the oh, weather yeah. was great. I don't know, we just really love That's what I don't hear. I don't hear that the weather's all that great. But well, the winds, you know, but the summer, I mean, we're in Texas. It's a hundred and something right now, every day. It's awful. So their summers are just beautiful. We were there for six months and tried getting another gig for another month, for another three months, and they wouldn't renew them. We, we loved it up there. Well, that's good. And the second place would be Nashville. Oh, I'm going there. I'm going there in September. Oh, girl, we'll have to talk. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk offline. I, I just booked my ticket this morning and I am excited. I want to see the Grand Ole Opry and I want to eat. Nashville to is amazing. It really is. Again, the people are nice. It's a smaller city. It's not real big. It, I mean, they have a little bit of traffic, but nothing near what our big cities have. Okay. If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? A dog, because they're loyal and they have unconditional love yeah and dog is god spelled backwards oh i like that yes yes very, very important what would you tell a 25 year old samantha rawlingson i would tell her kind of what i have lived by is don't live without regret with don't live with regrets when you make decisions think about am I going to regret this? Or am I, I wish I would have. I I know too many people who are in their fifties and they're like, I wish I would have done this. I wish I would have, I don't live that way. And I would tell my younger self that all over again. So no, if I could have, would have, should have, just go ahead and do just it. Just do it. Just do it. What would you tell um, a nurse right now that's struggling and, you know, saying, you know what, I don't find joy in this anymore. How would you encourage her? 
Oh, that's a hard one because that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> um, I would say take time and meditate and think about what are other alternatives to nursing or in nursing. Nursing has so many different avenues. Um, and write a pro on a con list. What, what, why is it a good reason to stay in nursing? Why is it a bad way to, you know, reason to stay in nursing? What can, what else can you do? Make a list it, because there, there's a lot of things you can do in nursing. Right. And people don't realize that. I mean, you can go into education, you can go into training, you can go into administration, uh, right. you know, you can write a book. And I'm finding that there's a lot of traditional nurses that are moving more into the integrative medicine and holistic space as yes. well as hospice. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see a lot of giving birth, but you also see a lot of the transition right. in between. Um, and you have your own experience there. So I encourage you, you know, like Samantha said, write your pros and cons, look at it, look at your money, because <laughs> nurses make mm -hmm. a lot of money. <laughs> but look at, at how you might be able to adjust your life. Really, what is important? How right. long are you able to stay in this career? And, you know, after COVID, the nursing profession has really declined because they were treated like sloppy seconds. Yep. All that the, the, the nurses went through, you know, couldn't get their, you know, protective gear and had to work and was forced to take the jab themselves and, you know, hours couldn't go home and be with their family. There's a lot. So nurses are one of my favorite people and teachers on the planet because your work is not in vain, not at all. You are earth angels. And so really pat yourself on the back, but figure out how you can edit, filter and shift. Now, are you currently coaching? I am. Tell us a little yeah. bit about your program. So I'm just starting out and I have one client at this point. Um, but what starts I, with one. Yeah, it starts with one. So what I, the way my program works is we start with an intake and then I get information from the client to see where they want to be and where they want to go. And we work on one topic a week and then that topic actually we continue with throughout the three months or six months however long they want what whatever they choose the three or six if you're in chronic pain I highly suggest six months because you didn't get there overnight it's going to take time and changing that mindset really does take time so um, they have little homework things to do to do on a weekly basis. And we just go through the, uh, my program has nutrition, mindset, and lifestyle. Mm. We have three pillars and we go through those pillars and we slowly change how we think about our life. That's beautiful. Brains, discipline and consistency, discipline and consistency, discipline and consistency. That is what I tell myself. You know, the hardest part of working out is putting on your tennis shoes. Right. You know, and the getting thing, up and doing it. And, and don't, the first thing you need to do is you need to decide. You need to make that decision and do it. Because I know I was having uh, sciatica. And I was just kind of, you know, taking the over-the-counter or taking the other stuff. And it was tearing up my stomach. My stomach, you know, it was not good. Physical therapy for me. Honestly, I didn't go to all the sessions. That was my fault because it, I didn't do it. But I found alternatives. I found the movement. I dedicated to um, changing my position, how I seat, and also working on my core. You know, all that belly fat due to inflammation and, and not eating good. That's moving your organs around the brain. Don't just think you're swelling up. It's moving and, and causing problems. You know, yeah. you can't lift. You can't bend you know, your knees, all of these types of things. But if you do, even chair yoga is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, move it or you're going to lose it. Right. And and to let people know, people think yoga and they think these people who can do backbends and do, you don't have to be doing those. It, it can be mild things that make a huge difference in how you move. 
And really, brains, yoga is preparation for meditation. It is. So once you get into the breath, believe me, you breathe two or three times and you're going to go deeper and deeper and deeper. And then when you're so when you're finished, you're going to feel like I felt when I got to the top of the hill. You're going to pat yourself on the back. Well, thank you, Samantha, for being with us. Tell my brains how to get in contact with you. I'd love for them to work with you, have a consultation with you um, to have some alternatives in their lives outside of, you know, maybe what they're currently doing. Yeah. Um, so you can reach me on most of the social medias, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, also my email address is Samantha at Samantha And, um, just so they know the spelling and the last name is R A W L I N S O N. All right. Well, we are going to get with it brains. We gonna go out today. Right now, okay? As soon as you click off of this, I want you to go and do something. If it's nothing but some squats, if it is walking to the corner and back, taking the dog out for an extra walk, parking your car a little further, taking the steps instead of taking the elevator, but take care of yourself. That's the most important thing. And go ahead. Um, just one suggestion. There's an app called Stand Up that's free, and it reminds people throughout the day to get up and move. That way, they it reminds them. Absolutely. So you need and, and set a timer on your phone. Make yeah. that make that device work for you. So I need you to go in and do one more thing, brains. I need you to love, like, share, and subscribe right here. Love, like, share, and subscribe. And go in and share this in interview uh, of Samantha's and mine with other friends. Share it on your page. Take some of the suggestions that we offer. Of course, it's going to take some discipline. It's going to take some time. But what did I say? Discipline and consistency. That will change your life. Thank you so much, Samantha. And uh, we're going to talk offline about that Nashville. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right. Bye, Brains. Have a good day. Bye, Brains.